What's up, y'all? It's your girl, S to the C, Scorpio. S to the C, twerk goddies. So, today I want to talk to you about financial literacy. Now, I know it is a perilous time in the world. Um, you know, this video is long overdue. A lot of people are panicking about their financial situation. You know, they want information, tips, and tools on you know financial literacy they might want more awareness or information about financial literacy so have you ever wondered like why or how rich people become broke or go broke well it has to do with financial literacy or lack of and so financial literacy is the ability to understand and effectively use various financial skills including personal financial management budgeting, and investing. So we'll cover a little bit about budgeting, investing, um, ways that you can manage your finances, and um, a little more information or tools or techniques that you could use um, in becoming financially literate. Um, financial literacy is also the foundation of your relationship with money and its lifelong journey of learning. So, um, you know, unless you was born into a family, <clears throat> a wealthy family, um, you know, you're going to have to learn how to have a relationship with money or your finances. And so um, some of the ways that you can increase your finances are what you're doing now, tuning into this video, learning more about financial literacy, um, but also budgeting, couponing, savings, investments, entrepreneurship, or inventions or products or services. So there's a variety of types of investments. So for starters, I would suggest a savings account. You know, it's a simple way to save money. You definitely want a savings account that is going to give you a lot of interest, even though, okay, you may get one penny on a $100, um, you know, just depending on how long you keep that balance. In your savings account and it also depends on if you're with a credit union they might offer more interest or a regular bank such as like bank of america or wells fargo or chase union bank just to name a few and throw them out there um another type of investment is a cd account so a cd is an account where um basically the money stays in the account until the maturity date so you can actually select you know well there's a variety of dates um, that you could select for the maturity date. It could be like a year. It could be two years. It's just based on you. And the minimum deposit for a CD account is $1,000. So you, you know, you have some extra money. You got your income taxes. You can actually start a CD account, um, leave that money in there, and it'll definitely create interest. Of course, the longer you leave it in there past the maturity date, the more um, ROI or return on your investment. Now, you're not going to get rich by a CD account. You know, it's not you leave $1,000 in there for a year and you're going to become a millionaire. That's not how it works, but it's just um, a simple way to... Kind of increase your income um, it is an investment so you will make a little more money um, so those are some good things to have another type of account is an IRA um, some other types of investments are gold and silver so as of lately we've been hearing a lot of talks about um, investing in gold or silver um, gold um, you know the dollar is going to be backed by gold or silver or you know just in general gold and silver is an investment um, you could barter with it. Um, you could always use gold. Um, you could sell it. I mean, there's a variety of things you could do with gold and silver. Like, you know, it's just something that you definitely want to have um, that you could easily assess. Um, whether, I don't know where you would keep it at, but um, <laughs> you would definitely want gold and silver because it's an asset, right? Who doesn't want an asset? Um, another form of investments are um, businesses or entrepreneurship, um, inventions, um, creating a product or a service. So, 
these types of investments, okay, well, anything that you invest in, you're going to have to put money into currency, finances, obviously. Um, and you definitely want to see a return on your investment. So um, starting a business is not easy. It's not cheap. You know, there's a lot of work that requires um, going into it. A lot of people think, oh, I'll just start a business and I'll become a millionaire overnight. That's not the reality. Um, you know, I'm sure there may be a, a handful of people that did go into business and were able to um, make a good return on their investment. But it does take time, it does take patience and practice. It's something that you have to work out and work at. There's so much that you need to learn um, in business, in your business, um, who's your customer, um, what is your product or service, how are you reaching these customers, um, a variety of things that go into operating the business. You know, are you going to hire staff, um, payroll, taxes, um, forms and licenses and all that. But we'll get more into that in my channel because I am a business specialist and I do provide um, business development, um, business resources, access to capital and funding. We talked a little bit about that, but uh, we'll get more into it as we get more into my channel. But um, definitely hit me up if you're interested in starting a business. I have incorporated several corporations, nonprofits, and LLCs um, for people that just you know, wanted to start a business. And those businesses have gone on to do some amazing things. Um, I started a company for a painter not too long ago, and he just keeps getting contracts. And every time he gets a contract, he calls me. He's like, ah, Keisha, you know, I'm really happy. And I also, um, you know, provided him with all the documentation necessary for him to go and open up his business checking account and, you know, um, basically be um, a legitimate business, you know, an established entity with um, all the documentation needed to be a legit, legitimately formed corporation. So um, that's really exciting. Uh, I know a lot of people have begun to start new businesses um, as a result of the 2020 pandemic um, because so many businesses shut down. Some people retire from their job early for a variety of reasons. Y'all already know. Um, some people were laid off of their jobs. Some people were fired. Uh, businesses closing. So a lot of things happened. Some people were forced into entrepreneurship. Some people um, kind of had like a plan or an idea. And this was the perfect opportunity for them to take advantage of that. Um, so that's a little bit about businesses or entrepreneurship as an investment. Other investments are digital currency um, or NFTs. Now, uh, we do live in an information age. So if you don't know a lot about digital currency or NFTs, I highly suggest you um, do your research and find out a lot more about digital currencies and NFTs. Some digital currencies are performing better than others. Um, as of lately, Bitcoin hasn't been doing so good. <laughs> Shiba Anu hasn't been doing so good. Dogecoin hasn't been doing so good. So <laughs> I'm laughing because um, I actually invested in those digital currencies. And, you know, it's just amazing how they're just doing horrible right now. <laughs> but anyways, another way um, that you can invest is through owning property or land, um, purchasing rental property, multi-units, or even apartment buildings. Now, the thing with purchasing property or um, a home or land, anything like that, you'll have to do your due diligence and um, improve your credit, right? So you definitely want to limit your debt to income ratio. So that means um, the money that you bring home or whatever um, revenue that you're generating, whether that's, whether that's through um, your gross income, whether you have a job or um, through your business or whatever type of source of income you may have, you definitely want to spend less than what you're making. That's really important in decreasing your debt to income ratio. And also um, it'll play a major factor in your credit. So you definitely want to eliminate debt or limit your debt and improve your credit. And, you know, you could do that by paying off your credit cards um, or whatever is on your credit report. I definitely encourage you to run your credit um, 
if not annually. I mean, it should be free. Everyone has access to a free credit report. Um, but just see what's on your credit. You may need to dispute some things. Um, if you're disputing anything, definitely want to keep documentation of everything and keep track of when you reached out to the credit bureau and you want to reach out to all three credit bureaus. It's a fairly simple process to dispute things. And, you know, sometimes within a matter of days, um, you know, you could find out the update on anything that's been disputed, um, their response, you know, the creditor's response, or, um, you know, if there was any type of disagreements. And with the credit dispute, you could definitely um, believe they have 30 to 45 days. I, I think it's 30 days, if I'm not mistaken. So you definitely want to um, improve your credit, um, you know, pay off your debts. I have a very interesting story about the pen and the teddy bear. You know, when I was in college, I was just so excited. I'm grown now. Hey, um, I'm independent. No, but I really enjoyed um, learning. So college was an exciting experience for me. But I'll never forget the first day I got on campus, you know, there was this table with a really bright tablecloth and an umbrella and it just looked really shiny and glittery and fancy. And they were like, come over here, come over here. You know, it was it was kind of demonic. I ain't even going to cap. But they was like, come here. You want a free pen? I was like, oh, I love pens. I'm a writer. I love pens. Um, so they got me there and they was like, oh, we got this teddy bear, too. So I like teddy bears, you know especially the big fluffy ones. So um, I wanted the pen and the teddy bear. So I signed up for a credit card, not having any type of financial literacy, not knowing anything about credit. <laughs> okay, I was a freshman in college. What was I, 17 or whatever? I went to college early. But anyways, like I'm a freshman in college. I don't know anything about credit. Um, I did have a job. So like I, I had a checking account. I was managing my checkbook. I was saving, but I didn't have any concept about um, that credit card. You know what I mean? Like I had bills. Like I think I had a serious credit card. Or I just had like one credit card. But this particular credit card, I think it was a MasterCard. And so being in college, you know, there's a lot of expenses. You need food, you need clothing, you know, you need transportation. You just need all these things. You need books, you need supplies. And so I, I think I may have had a um, um, $2,000 limit, 2500 something like that. Um, and I'm just cha-chinging, cha-chinging, cha-chinging. And I think I maxed out my credit card like the first week I got it. And I learned a big lesson about debt you know what I mean so it's definitely something if you have credit cards you don't want to be using them excessively unnecessarily like they should be for emergencies only but um that was just my little spill on my credit card experience in college because um when we talk about like purchasing property or land um you definitely want to make sure that you have a very minimum debt to income ratio and you also, um, you know, want to make sure that you have a good credit score, that you have um, good credit. So another type of investment that someone can make is like insurance bonds or saving bonds, um, insurance policies, life insurance. That is an investment, um, especially the type of policies that allow you to, um, you know, get the cash back or whatever case of an emergency or if someone becomes disabled, you can pull cash off of that. So that's a good investment. Um, also, that one's kind of good and it, lead, it leads into like when we start talking about generational wealth because, you know, you definitely want to leave your family, um, the responsible ones, you know, you want to leave them some type of inheritance. So um, you can find that in like um, life insurance policies. So how to get started? Well, first, again, you want to... Um, Check your credit report. You want to pay off any debt that you have on your credit report. Um, you can also, if if you're a newbie, that's fine, you know. And I know it's like, well, dang, you know, this information is um, dire right now for some people. But some people, you know, they've been in the game for years and, you know, it, this is not their first rodeo. And so, um, but for some that are newbies, you know, you definitely want to start. Because I know my east side babies, some of y'all don't have, yeah, some of y'all don't got bank accounts. Some of y'all don't got checking accounts, some of y'all, and that's okay, you know what I mean? Start where you start where you are, you know, it's okay, nobody's judging you, but a good way to get started is um, open up a savings account. Um, right now, a lot of business um, accounts are um, 
offering incentives. So I think I got one in the mail the other day. Like if you open a business account, you could get like $3,000 over time. You know, of course there are some rules that apply. You need to um, open the account and deposit so much money in this amount of time. And then they will um, reward you with that incentive. So sometimes I think it's like $1,000 per every $3,000 you deposit. So um, that's the form of an investment and it's like a double investment because you're not only investing in your future by having an account, but they also offer a good incentive. And, you know, they do provide those incentives. I think it's um, 90 days after the account's been open or something like that. But, you know, you got to read the fine print. But, you know, that's a good way to start. Another way to start is to, again, find out more information about stocks and bonds, um, purchase gold or silver, or create a product or a service, you know, invent something, you know, so that's really important. Another thing, um, when we talk about financial literacy, financial well-being, financial freedom, financial investments is spending. So when it comes to spending, we definitely want to economize. We want to spend less than we make. That's going back to the debt to income ratio. You want to minimize overspending. You want to come like a minimalist. You know, you definitely want to become like a minimalist and really only buy what you really need. So right now, with inflation and gas prices and food prices, you know, you, you want to avoid eating out, you know, not just for health reasons, you know, but for financial reasons, like it's expensive eating out. I know some families, they feel like that's their only option or for some, it might consider it cheaper to eat out, but it definitely adds up. Then when you add on tax, if you're ordering Uber Eats or through any type of delivery service, um, it could definitely add up over time and all that money you could put into your savings or you could, you know, start putting that money towards you know, some of your goals, whether it's to start a business or to purchase some rental property or land. So you definitely want to minimize your spending. Um, another way to do that is through couponing. So a lot of people, you know, are not hip to coupons. Some people are like experts on couponing, couponing. I say couponing. People try to correct me. But it's coupon. I say coupon. Okay. But anyways, um, yeah, coupons. Um, definitely help save money. And I don't got no shame in my game. I be using coupons. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. If I could get 10% off, 20% off. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Um, another cool perk is um, with credit cards or even your bank cards, your debit cards, they have this feature to where like if you go to certain stores, um, you could activate to get like 10% off your purchase and things like that. So those are really good too, but you definitely want to avoid um, excessive spending. So couponing, budgeting, finding sales, if you just have to have something. And then also this one's really big and a lot of smart people do this. Um, they basically utilize used products. So let's just say, for example, you go on Amazon and you want to buy a book. Well, you don't have to get the new book. You could get the used book and save money. So you definitely want to minimize your spending and find different ways that you can save money. Because I'm telling you right now, you're going to need it right now with the gas prices and the food prices and everything just like going up, going up, going up. It's really important that, you know, you kind of um, maximize your dollar. They say the dollar is like worth a penny now. <laughs> I believe it. I see it. But even if it is a penny, you definitely want to maximize that and minimize your spending. Um, so I think that pretty much covers everything. Oh, one more story. Um, the millionaire in Beverly Hills. So at one point in my life, I worked in Beverly Hills and, you know, that was my first experience. I was really young. Um, I, that was my first experience working in Beverly Hills. And I was just like fascinated, like, ooh, ah, looking at right around the corner from Rodale Drive. And I'm just like, wow, this is so luxurious. But um, on my way to work, I used to see this guy. I eventually ended up talking to him, but he would have like on a, the same suit every day and like these really busted penny loafers with a hole in it, but he was a millionaire. And I was just like, wow, that's dope. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> he he's not trying to impress anybody. So I'm saying that to say that a lot of times, um, you know, in the pandemic, we've seen a lot of people at the Louis store, the Gucci store, uh, you know, Celine, all these designers, right? Tiffany and Co. 
all these, you know, expensive designers, but many of my East Side babies was not investing that money. Many of my East Side babies was not saving that money. So I shared the example of the mil the millionaire and penny loafers with you because he had a million dollars. He could go buy whatever name brand he wanted, but he wore the same suit and the same busted shoes every day. So that's what I mean when I say minimize your spending. Um, again, improve your credit, limit your debt, limit your debt to income ratio. And, you know, just as much as you take care of your physical, mental and emotional well-being, your financial well-being is just as important. So I hope you enjoyed this video on financial literacy. I hope you found it very informative. I hope you will utilize um, some of the tips and techniques that I discussed in this video um, just to help you or someone you know that may be having some challenges with their finances or you know, having a hard time um, or may have the means, but just don't know what to do. So I hope this helps you. But it's your girl, S to the C, Scorpio, S to the C, twerk goddess. Shout out all my Eastside babies and I'm out.